Thank you. As you can see, my name is not actually from the Netherlands, so my accent is from the UK. I'm originally from Spain. I have a background in computer science and electrical engineering, and I've been working in the online travel industry for the last six years with Google. And actually, before I'm, I'm going to start my presentation, because I was speaking with a couple of people here, and they were all asking me, what are you doing here? What is Google doing in this, in this, in this conference? We work with, with, we work with travel clients as a consulting, consultancy services. So I would say in three different areas. When it comes to cons cons uh, consumers, when we, when we want to understand the consumer behavior, so for example, as a hotel, you want to expand to another country, another city, and you, you want to understand how the users are looking for this, for this specific destination. Which type of users? Is it because they are interested in uh, gastro-tourism, eco-tourism? So this is one area. The second one is working as a technology company. So once you have defined all of your assets online, we help you to identify what is the customer behavior of in, in your website. Do you have to improve the user experience? Do you have to change something in your website? And the last part is also as a technology company, but how you can bring together all of the data to try to have better knowledge of your customer. When it comes about me, I think I'm the typical millennial. I, I work for Google, background in, tech, in uh, electrical engineering, but I also like skydiving. And actually, someone asked me for the feeling while skydiving. I would say it's the same feeling as I have here now. It's excited to be here. I would like to get to know you all. And this topic is going to be, I, I have two goals for this topic, for this presentation. One is I would like to have you all with me for 20 minutes. Let's see if you cannot use your phone. And the second one, I'm going to be talking about data, how data and technology are going to help us to solve, uh, to, to address the challenge that we have in the industry. But before we start, I have a question for all of you. By so of hand, which one do you think is the top country searching for hotels in the UAE on Google? UK, no one in the UK, France, India, I made it easy, obviously there is a lot of volume in India, and here we have, uh, here we have the answer, obviously India is one of the top countries searching for hotels in the UAE, but when it comes to growth, we have India, France, Russia, and the Ukraine. Those are all of the countries searching for hotels in the UAE in 2018. And I will tell you more. This region, there are more than 3 billion travel searches uh, in MENA. To tell you a little, maybe to kind of like give you a bit more, a, a number that you are going to be more familiar, it's around 40 travel searches per user in the UAE and Saudi. So we search for travel 40 times a year when it comes to Google.com. I have bad news and good news. I will start with the good news. 50% of those travel searches are related to accommodation. But when it comes to accommodation, most of the people, they, are not, they don't have a brand on top of mind. They are not looking for Marriott, Hinton, Barcelona, or other hotels. 80% of the total searches related to accommodation are related to the destination. It's, for example, hotels in New York, hotels in London, things to do in New York, things to do in London. You all know this is a really fragmented market, and it's really difficult to have loyalty and also the customers to know our brand. When it comes to devices, and probably some of you are using now your, your smartphone, 70% of the total travel searches are made on, on, on mobile. And the travel has changed, and the way they search for information has changed as well. They not only use Google.com, they also go to YouTube, the second biggest engine, to search for inspiration and things to do in the destination. To give you more details, Saudi is the highest country in terms of views per capita for Google globally. This region is really important in terms of video and how the people search for, for inspiration on YouTube. When it comes to travel, 88% of the travel content relate, is related to the destination. 
They are looking for inspiration. They want to know if I'm going to Maldives, which is the best island to go to Maldives? What can I do in the Maldives? Can I go whale watching? Can I go fishing? So people is going into YouTube to search for inspiration. So obviously there has been a change in the industry. And to show you this change, we are going to watch a video. With this shift from offline to all online, there has been an enormous amount of data generated. 90% of the total data today has been generated over the last two years. And this number is just only expected to grow. So with all of this data that we have, we can conclude, first of all, that there are not cust two customers that are the same. Every customer is different. We cannot say people from the GCC or people from Germany. There are not two customers that are the same. When it comes to the customer journey, it's completely different. There are many touch points during the customer journey, and we cannot assume that there is just only one customer journey. And lastly, and very important, is in terms of ex expectations. The expectations have changed. People, we became more impatient, more curious, we, more demanding. We want everything now. So now we are going to be looking in all of these different, how the customer has changed, the customer journey and the expectations, and how with the use of data and technology, we can apply those things in our businesses. When it comes to customers, as we mentioned before, the, the customer that is today in our hotel is not the same that it was in our hotel 20 years ago. There are three different areas where I would like to focus. First of all, we have new customers, especially in this region. This this region is the home of more than 200 nationalities. Just only the Dubai airport moves more than 88 million passengers from transit. So just to give you an example, it's like moving Spain two times. So there are new customers, there are new people, and there will be more and more people in this region. We cannot assume that everybody is the same. When it comes to new destinations, there are more and more people interested in coming to the region. For example, uh, UAE has become one of the top destinations for New Year's Eve when it comes to Italy, Germany, or the UK. But also people in the region are looking for alternative destinations. They just don't want to go to the Maldives or London. They are looking for alternative destinations such as Azerbaijan, Georgia, Mauritius, and Russia. And lately, and we were discussing this during the presentation that I've seen today, niche becomes mainstream. People is more and more interested in ecotourism, gastrotourism. There is an increase of 20% in travel in searches related to ecotourism in Saudi. This is going to become really, really important in the future. So when it comes to the when it comes to customers, we have to reimagine the, the, custom, the customer. We have to think about personalization. How we are going to personalize the experience of the customers when it comes to our hotels. This is an example of a cruise company. Basically, what they did is they established the communication with the customer before they went into the cruise. They asked them, tell me how the perfect cruise looks like for you. Maybe they prefer to go whale watching instead of going fishing. Or maybe someone prefer to the souk, or someone prefer to go somewhere else. So they wanted to understand how the, how the perfect cruise looks like for them. 
while they were in the destination, while they were in the cruise, the company changed the experience accordingly. So they were able to upsell those experiences accordingly to the customer. So just imagine, like you do that in your hotel, when you know that someone that is interested in wine, which type of wine do I like uh, from Australia? Do I like wine from Spain? So think about all of those things. Like we can know our customer and we can personalize our message in the hotel. When it comes to the journey, we mentioned before, there are many, many places where we can go to get information about which type of hotels, offline and online. Because offline, we go, we ask friends, we speak with people. In terms of online, we go to the online travel agency, we go to Google, we go to Facebook, all of these different platforms. There are more than 45 touch points. It's really difficult to say that there is just only one linear customer journey. People go, as I say, to OTA, search engine, newsletter, they get information from everywhere. And luckily, with online, with the shift from offline to online, we are able to collect a lot of data from the customers. Traditional marketeers, probably they were focusing just only in demographics and psychographics. Let's say people from the UAE interested in cooking, and then they target all of these people. But in reality, in online, now we can have access to all of these different signals. We can really personalize our message to our customer. We can know if it's someone, if it's a millennial. We can go if they are coming from which device. We can identify all of these different signals. But it's difficult when it comes to like all of the data that we have. It's really difficult to define or to combine all of these different signals. So it's important to apply data at scale and automation. Use machine learning and artificial intelligence to let the machines actually find the perfect destinations, the perfect combinations for us. We have three different examples for automation. One is a global example, HomeAway. What they did is they analyzed the customer behavior in the website to identify the lack likeliness of the user to convert. So for example, depending what the user was doing in the website, if they spent two minutes in the website, three minutes, looking at the specific content they were looking in the website, they can identify the likeliness of the user to convert, and they will adapt and change the message in the website. When it comes to Yumeira, probably this is a very technical description, but basically what they did, they centralized the media marketing data. They have the data from Google, they have the data from Facebook, also the CRM data. And then they centralize all of the information to be able to have a holistic overview of the customer journey. I know this is a big topic for all of the hospitality of the hotels. There are many, many sources of data. And it's really difficult to consolidate all of the data. Now, with the use of technology and automation, it's possible to do that. What Jumeira did is actually they, could, they, they, have a, they can have a holistic overview of the performance of all of the hotels, and they can also have a holistic a better understanding of the users and the customer's journey. The last one, Abu Dhabi Department of, of Culture and Tourism, they are not selling any tickets in terms of flights, hotels, or experiences, but they want to provide, they provide information and they want to inspire people to travel to Abu Dhabi. So for them, it was really important to drive quality traffic to the, web, to the website, because at the end of the day, you want to optimize your investment in media, and you want to drive quality traffic to your website. So what is quality traffic for them? They say, I want people who is interested in my website, someone who is interested in looking for content for Abu Dhabi. So they identify engagement metrics into the website. So for example, clicking a button, or spending two minutes in this website, different engagement metrics. And they optimize the media campaigns accordingly to these metrics. When it comes to expectations, this is one of my, of my favorite topics. But people, we became very curious. Now when we, we speak and we don't, we don't know the answer, we always, don't worry, I'm going to Google it. So we have answers. We became really demanding. And we became really impatient. We need everything now. And when it comes to expectations, we also take the expectations from one experience, and we take it to the other experience. To give you an example, it's called liquid expectations. But to give you, to give you an example, we all, of, I'm an uh, Uber user. I'm using Uber, and I'm, oh, your taxi is three minutes. And I'm like, oh, great. They are actually giving me all of the information. Your taxi is going to be there in one minute. And I'm like, yeah, I have all of the information. 
So we are used to this type of experience. And then when I want to repair something at home, there is someone coming, they sent me an email. Someone is going to go Thursday at 5 p.m. And I'm Thursday at 5 p.m. waiting for that person. And then suddenly, half an hour later, they call me and they tell me, like, no, there has been a traffic, uh, accident traffic, and we have to go tomorrow. So I'm actually expecting the same behavior that I have in the Uber application. I would like, I'm thinking, like, why I cannot have the same experience when it comes to others, the same, uh, when it comes to other experiences? So we take expectations from one experience, and then we try to replicate to other, to other situations in our life. When I say people, we became really demanding. How we have seen this in our platform is because more and more people is searching for the best. And it's not only in hospitality, searching for the best hotels. We search for the best places for couples, the best places for families, the best hotel, the best everything. There is actually a 30% increase in, uh, in, in MENA, but I have to tell you that the biggest increase was actually two years ago. So this is still a trend, and everybody is looking for the best. As we mentioned at the beginning, 70% of the total travel searches are coming from mobile. When it, but when it comes to mobile, if your site takes more than three seconds to load, more than 50% of the people will just leave. They will not wait for the site to load. You are missing more than 50% of your traffic to your website just because you don't have optimized the site. So we have to move from answers to anticipation. We have to anticipate, as I say, we, we take the expectations from one experience and we replicate to another experience, as I say with Uber. We have to move to anticipation. This is, um, I don't understand what is uh, written in Chinese, but basically C-Trip is a big OTA in, in China. What they did is they take the data of the users that they were buying first class tickets, and what they did is up, up sale with um, five star hotels. So they know if someone is buying a first class ticket, they upsell them with five star hotels, with limousine. So instead of waiting for the client to ask for those things, they actually went to the client and told them, by the way, we have this hotel that is, I think it's going to uh, match your, your, your profile. I will tell you something. 80% of the total content consuming Netflix is coming from recommendations. 35% of the total revenue in Amazon is coming from recommendations. So it's really important to anticipate and being able to recommend it if we, if we want to upsell to our customers. This is another example when it comes to Assistant. Probably you were expecting me to talk about Google Assistant and how you can use it in the hotel. This is another example of how KLM used Google Assistant. Okay, Google, let me talk to KLM. Hi, there my name is BB. I'm KLM Service Bot, and I can help you pack your bag. I'm going to Kenya. I'm going to Amsterdam. Geneva. Shall we start packing? Let's start with travel right. essentials, such as your passport and bank cards. Yep. The weatherman says it's going to be chilly in Geneva, so pack your gloves. Check. Pack your toothbrush and toothpaste. Okay, done. Make sure you pack enough underwear for three days. All right. I checked the local weather in Kenya and there's a chance of rain. Make sure to pack a raincoat. Any chance that you'll be hiking in Switzerland? Yes. Sunglasses are in the bag. Just don't wear them at night. Okay. You're not that guy from that song. <laughs> So if you have to remember something from this presentation, it's three things. In terms of consumer, there is not an average consumer. And we have the data to identify how we can personalize the experience of the consumer in our hotel. Secondly, the customer journey. There is not one linear customer journey. And we have the data and the technology to actually bring all of this data together and being able to get insights from this data, segment this data, understand better the customer, understand better the performance of my hotel. And in terms of expectations, we have to anticipate. If I know that someone is doing triathlons and is going to my hotel, maybe you can start the conversation around sports, like the gym or different areas. So three things, consum consumer some personalization, the customer journey automation, and the expectations anticipation. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Maria.